We here at the McQuiston program thought it would be helpful if we provided a bit of context because nearly each day in the two weeks since Dennis and I interviewed guests for our program on Hong Kong, China and the United States have increasingly raised the stakes, taking steps and making statements that are not going to be easily withdrawn. So here we are, more than 40 years after diplomatic relations were established, the future is quite uncertain. But one thing is clear, the next several months will be critical as each country tests the other without a lot of room for error. So here's what you need to know. It's been just a month since China imposed the National Security Act over Hong Kong. In response, the Trump administration, with wide congressional support, invoked the Magnitsky Act. The Magnitsky Act places sanctions on, uh, placed sanctions on several high-ranking Communist Party officials. Yet, these sanctions really should just be viewed as being largely symbolic because none of the individuals cited are really expected to travel to the United States, nor do they probably have any significant assets outside of mainland China. Also, several countries have suspended their extradition treaties with Hong Kong, including the United Kingdom, Australia, and Germany. And the United States has ordered an end to Hong Kong's special economic status. Now, just in the last 24 hours, Hong Kong's police have issued arrest warrants for six pro-democracy activists now living in exile. This confirms a fear that was voiced when China first imposed the National Security Act last month, that the law might be applied against non-residents as well as residents. One charged is an American, Samuel Chu. He uh, directs the Hong Kong Democracy Council, and this is a DC-based organization that advocates and promotes democracy in Hong Kong. According to China's state media, these men are wanted for, let me quote, incitement to succession and co collusion with foreign forces. Also this past week, a number of professors have been fired from Hong Kong universities, as well as a law school for their pro-democracy positions. One cannot help but think that this is just the beginning of what can only be described as a purge. And lastly, just yesterday, citing the coronavirus, Hong Kong's government postponed parliamentary elections that were scheduled to take place next month in September. They postponed them for an entire year, and they also banned 12 pro-democracy candidates from running in the elections. So given this, and what you're about to hear or will hear in our program, what is happening in Hong Kong now is a stark reminder that our relations with China are increasingly dangerous.